Okay, guys, it's a beautiful day today. Not for everyone. Look, right here, you see that? Someone didn't have such a nice day. Uh, oops, but anyway, so what I want to show you today is how you can make your gimbal shots look more dynamic Because that's usually the problem when you're filming yourself, right? You're limited in your movements and it might make your gimbal shots look a bit boring So I'm gonna give you some tips some tricks some techniques to make them look more dynamic Cinematic solo b-roll as they call it here on YouTube <laughs> And I'm gonna shoot everything with the new Zhiyun Crane M3. This is such a cool gimbal. It's tiny, it's light, but it can hold a smartphone, an APS-C camera, and even a full-frame camera, like my Sony a7S III. That's really cool for such a tiny gimbal. And, you know, also, it kinda looks like a Stormtrooper. I like that. There's a touchscreen, and as far as features go, this gimbal can do pretty much everything any other gimbal can do. And maybe even more, because there's a fill light, and there's this extra attachment here at the bottom that allows you to connect a microphone. Not just any microphone, but Jiyun's own microphone. Unfortunately, they were out of microphones when they sent me the gimbal, so I haven't had the opportunity to test it yet. Okay, but enough about this cool little gimbal. Let's shoot some video because that's what you're all here for, right? I'm gonna be using the Canon M50 with the kit lens. That's it. No ND filter, no nothing. We're gonna keep it super simple. A few weeks ago, or even months, I showed you the behind the scenes of one of my solo B-rolls and it was shot handheld and on a tripod, but I think the extra stability of a gimbal can give your cinematic sequence some extra I don't know, some extra oomph, you know what I mean? It might make people wonder, did he do that by himself or did he get some help? And that's what I want to achieve. What the hell is that smell? It smells like someone is smoking weed. Come give me some. What? No. Oh no, you're still recording, no. <coughs> The first tip is super simple, but the problem is that I don't see enough people doing it, and that's using inverted mode, or undersling, underslung mode, when you hold the gimbal, the handle of the gimbal up here, so that you can go really close to the ground. Now, I think I finally know why a lot of people are not using that mode. It's because it's not so easy with a small gimbal. When I'm using any of my other gimbals, my big gimbals, it's super easy. I just move the handle from down here, normal mode, to up here, and boom, I'm done. But because this gimbal is so small, I don't know if you can see it, there's always something in the way. So I can't just move the handle from down here to up here. I can do this, but the problem then is, depending on what lens you're using, this motor might get in the way. So that's also not a solution. So, I have a little trick. What I do now is, I use the joystick. Um, I'm just gonna show you. So what you have to do is, hold the gimbal like this. This is normal pan follow mode. And then you move the handle up, and at the same time, you move the joystick down. Because if you don't do that, you see what happens? The, the camera just wants to stay like this, because yeah, that's what a gimbal does. So you move the joystick down so that the camera starts to tilt down and then you move the handle up there. See what's happening now? There. And now you're in inverted mode, undersling mode. The motor is on the back here so it's not blocking your lens. The only problem is that your image is upside down but it's super easy to fix and post. You just one click of the button and the upside down image is an upside down again yeah so that's it and what's so great about inverted mode is that the closer you go to the ground the more dynamic your shot will look because the ground will be swooshing by and there's all this movement that will make your shot more dynamic you can use it when you're walking for example to film your feet And what you could also do, instead of just holding the camera in front of you, you can add some extra movement and maybe orbit around your feet. And 
to add even more movement, you can do exactly the same, but while riding a bike. Just be really careful with your camera. What is this here? It's a bug. And something else super simple that you can do to make your sequence look more dynamic is add close-ups. Because the thing with close-ups is that a lot of times a close-up feels more dynamic because it feels like there's a lot more going on compared to a wide shot. Let me show you the difference. So super simple, I'm gonna arrive with the bike here and then get off my bike. That's it. First a wide shot. And now let's do the same, but let's cut in a few close-ups. It will look a lot better. So that was a close-up for the front wheel. Now I'm gonna do one where I put the, the kickstand down. Something else super cool you can do with close-ups is some kind of action-reaction shot. And what I mean by that is, well, if I'm riding the bike, for example, and I change gears with my thumb, that action of changing gears should have some kind of reaction of the mechanical parts moving. So what I like to do is first show a close-up of my thumb changing the gears and then cut to a close-up of those mechanical parts moving. It's not easy, but if you can pull it off, then it looks really cool. In case you're wondering where the sun went, I ran out of time yesterday, so I had to come back today. But no problem, let's do this. Okay, so the shot of me changing the gears, no problem. Now a close-up of the mechanical parts behind me. Whew, okay, so ideally, I hold the gimbal in my right hand because the gears are on the right so I can film them in inverted mode like this but the gears here are also on the right side and I can't steer with my left hand on the right side here and change the gears I would die so I think what I'm gonna do is instead of holding the gimbal in my right hand I'm gonna hold it behind my back in my left hand like this and then I'm gonna get a top-down shot it won't be as nice as what I had in mind, but there's no other way. I have to do it like this. So then I can change the gears with my right hand, film with my left hand behind my back. I won't be able to see what I'm filming. Improvise, adapt and overcome. That's what they say, right? So, I don't know if I managed to get a good shot there of the mechanical parts moving. I think so, but I'm gonna have to go back to the studio and check it out to be sure. You already know. Um, yeah, wow. You see that? Don't you just love the forest when it's so misty and mystical and majestical? I like it even more than yesterday when it was all sunshiny. Looks really cool. But anyway, yeah, guys, so that's it for today. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you got inspired. I'm gonna shoot some B-roll of the gimbal before I head back to the studio and check out the shots. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.